Hi there, welcome to Darlene's Creative Studio. I thought I would start recording some of the journals I am going to be making for an upcoming exhibition at our local art gallery. So I've grabbed two old books that I've had in my stash for a while now. And this is The Wonderful Country. I just liked the um, illustrations on the cover and the inside has a very similar illustration. So what I'm going to do is actually cut the book pages out and use the cover so I can um, make a new handmade journal. And then this is one that I bought at a thrift store and this has feathers all over the cover. This is paper that is on the cover and it's pretty old and it's been smooshed a little bit, but it's actually Birds of America. And it has tons of bird pictures in it. So I will be able to use the bird pictures as well. And this looks like it was printed in 1950. So it's a fairly older um, book. And I like to keep, when I um, talk about, when I go through some of my stash, I talk about the end papers in the old books. This is the piece I'm talking about. It's the first piece of paper in the book before the title page. I keep all of these when I'm ripping up books when they're blank because they have nice color and patina to them and they're great for using as pages in a book or using them for making um, when I print some of my labels, my black labels. I like using this paper. It's nice and thick and it's great um, coloring. So I always rip the, this page out first. Um, actually, if I cut it, I think it'll come out. And I'm gonna try and fix this book. It looks like it was squished in something. So again, I will fix that as well. But I'm literally going to take my knife and just cut down the spine of the book. And I'm being very careful not to cut this um, spine off. And again, most of the spines in the old days, it's just that book cloth. There's nothing else to it. It's very, very thin. So you want to be very careful with that because we're going to actually have to reinforce that spine. Or if I don't like that, the um, thickness of it, I'll actually cut that off and just use the covers and then create my own spine for the width of spine that I would like. So literally I'm just cutting out the book pages and there is the book itself. Now this, I don't know, I think I'm going to make it a little thicker. It just seems a little thin. So I'm going to cut this off, um, this cover off right in those little seams there. And then when I create my own spine, I'll actually have the fabric come over the paper a little bit more as well. Um, so there is one cover cut out. I'll just leave that one there, but I want to save these end pages so I always rip off that paper and save that so that's the first thing I do make sure I save that first page and then these are just the, the book pages and this one is actually sewn and if you check them out I'm going to pull this all off. I'm just trying to pull a little bit off so I can show you. But this one actually is in signatures. You can see that they are definitely, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, eleven or twelve signatures there. So um, you can actually cut the little strings in the middle of the pages. And I'm just going to see if I can find one. I don't know. There. So there's little strings here and I normally just put my knife underneath and give it a little cut. Um, you can also use a stitch ripper, a sewing stitch ripper. That works really well for getting underneath the strings. And then I just pull the pages out like that. If you want to keep the book pages intact and use them say in a journal or something, um, one of your junk journals, that's the best way to do it is keep them intact. And these have such lovely coloring to them, these book pages. Now this is the one that's glued on to the, the next signature. They always glue their signatures together with a little bit of glue. Um, so these book pages probably won't get sewn in as one. These will probably get torn apart and used as a cover. See how it's, it's pretty thin there where it's, I've had to rip it off because of the glue. So that one would probably get ripped apart but these can be used in a signature. I think that one's two. Yes, it is. And you have to be very careful pulling them apart 
because they do hang on when they've been sewn together a long time. So there are a couple of signatures that you can use in a book. And then you just go through and do the next one and cut the strings and etc. So there is um, one signature that I will use. There are two end papers that I will use. And I will definitely use the cover. And I am going to grab my cutting mat here. And I am going to cut these um, because I'm going to be covering them with my own spine fabric, I'm just going to cut them right against the cardboard. If you're not, and you're going to do one of those open spines where you have stitching across the Coptic stitch or something like that, you could cut down the center of your spine and then use this fabric to roll it over so that you have a nice clean surface here. You would glue that down onto the inside so that you would have a nice surface. But I'm going to be making my own... I'm just going to cut along the cardboard. And whenever I start one of these projects, I always make sure that I have a brand new blade in my knife because it will cut so much easier through everything if my blade is the right, a new one. It's nice and clean. So there, there's my cover. It's cut right up against the cardboard. And when I attach this, I will put some fabric across that. So I won't be needing that. And I'm just going to trim this again, right up against that cardboard. There we go, take that away. So there's one cover. And again, I'm gonna get um, some pliers and a hammer and just try and pull that back out again. It will be covered with the fabric, but I still want it to be flat. So there's a cover. That's the first one. Now this one, again, the inside pages are patinaed really nicely and I love the softer edges to the paper. It just feels so nice, the smoothness of it. Um, so I normally will go through and if there's something like this in there that is just an image with a blank, I'll keep that because I might be able to use that for something. But what I'm going to start with is just cutting out the, the book pages. And again, you want to make sure, even though I'm going to be cutting the cover right off, this one I might keep. I don't know until after I pull it apart. I, you're just putting the tip of your blade in there and pulling down slightly along the book pages like that. You want to make sure you don't cut that spine. And then all I do is flip it around, open up the book pages, and then you have a better access to not cutting the spine and the book pages. You're just going to be putting your blade between the paper and the spine and cutting down. So there we go. So there is that. There is the inside and again, flimsy book cloth the spine is not if I was to leave this intact um, just like that which I don't think I'm going to because I like to make four or five signatures and make the spine a little wider um, and then what you could do is just take a piece of chipboard or the back of I'm just going to grab a little one here so you could grab a piece of chipboard and glue that in there to reinforce the spine or the back of your paper pads. It has a nice thin um, cardstocky feel to it. These are the backs of some paper pads, the, the scrapbooking paper, and it's a little bit thicker. It's probably a 0.3 or 4 or 5 chipboard. These make really nice. So you'd cut a piece that would go in there and you want to make sure when you cut that piece that you can lift your pages up like this and they don't get caught. So you want to make sure that it fits within that space and still be able to lift your book pages up and then you would just glue it on there and that would reinforce your spine a little bit and you could leave that spine intact. Again, I'm, I'm not going to do that because I think I'm going to make a thicker spine to that. I'm not sure with this one so I'm just going to leave it. I'm not going to cut it off yet. And then again, I go through and just look. This one has somebody's writing on it, so I'm not going to be able to keep it. But that second page, let's see, let's pull these off. That second page is kind of cool. Let's see where it's just like that. And then again, I go through some of these and look for any blank pages. Like this one, he has his... Um, 
dedication here is to memory of his mother and father. Um, but on the back of that page is all blank. So I'd still be able to use this for stamping some labels on. I would just stamp them around that in memory of my mother and father sort of thing. And then there's another one, again, blank on the back with just a little bit of, so I would keep that as well. And then this one, see, I can still use a lot of the space around there. So I would keep that. And this is, this is the kind of thing I think I'm gonna keep for, I might be able to use those in a collage or something. So then I just kind of flip through the book and if there's images in, in the book that you want to use, maybe for a collage, I would keep them, um, rip out those pages, there's a gun, there's some crutches, it's just kind of neat, it, it's got some really nice, okay, so there's the part two. It has the blank on the back, so I would take that page out. And I don't believe this one is signatures. I believe this one is just single pages. So I just bend it as much as I can. Yeah, see, it's just single pages. See how it's, you can see it's ripped the spine there? And then I would just pull that out. So I'd have that one. And then just keep flipping through and see if there's any other pages that you'd like to keep. There's one more I saw there. What's that one? There's a gun and a hat. Some of them are quite cute. There's part four, so there's obviously a part three. Right there. Again, fold your book out. I'll keep that one. There's part three. There's some, oops, I think there's part four right there. Yep. It's getting to the back of the book. It's harder to bend out, but you want to make sure you do that so you don't rip the page. There we go. And we'll keep that one. There we go. And then I go to the back and I'm going to keep that back page, which is nice and thick. And I'm going to keep that second back page because it's another one of those. And then this one has, I believe, has writing on it, so I'm not going to use that one. But that's that's all you do. I just kind of go through them, and if there's something, a picture of something that I think is kind of neat, I'll keep it. Um, I'll keep that one because it's nice and thick. I'll keep that one. And I don't think I need that one. So then I would recycle this. Um, if, if you want to use it as collage paper, you can, but I have way too many of these, so I normally throw those in my recycle bin. So next I'm going to be working on um, the spines. Let's just get these books back. Um, creating the width of a spine. Now, I did have that one board here. I wonder if it's big enough. Oh, almost. So I would just take a piece of heavyweight chipboard and create a spine for these in the width that I would like. And I have tons and tons and tons of scrap chipboard here. And these ones are all cut to a certain size. I will keep those. These are from another book that I was making. These are just chipboard covers and the spines. We'll keep all those spines, might be able to use those in other books, but we want something that we can use for that one. And I keep all my scraps under here. Oh my goodness, I was making a certain size book, wasn't I? There we go, so I can use that one. So that's a nice size. Let's see what this size of spine is. That one is one and five, four, five eighths, one and five eighths. So that's not a bad size spine. So that will give me enough for a couple of signatures. Um, so all I have to do now is trim it down to the height of the book. And I'd like to make sure that both of these are lined up perfectly. And I'm gonna use the bottom because this one has a little chunk out of it. Let's do it this way because that one's wonky. And you should probably put something across the bottom here to make sure it's even. And I do have these little acrylic 
that I use to make my fabric boxes. That's on this. This is for making corners, and it's a straight edge. So I would do something like that, and then get a pencil and mark off the top here. So I know I'm going to be cutting that portion off right there. Okay. So I'll save those. Let's move my binder in. And I'm just going to make sure I'm even along here. And I normally will line it up with my lines on my cutting mat. And make sure that it's nice and straight. And then I will cut this off. And again, you want to make sure you're straight here. And I'm straight along a line here. And then you just take your knife and you make a little score mark. And once you get that score started, you can just keep following in it. You don't need to keep the blade, the um, metal piece there, but I do just to... And you gotta make sure your knife is being held straight upside. This way has to be straight, your blade. You don't want your blade to be on an angle because then you get a funny cut at the top. Oh, there, I'm already cut. So there we go, and there is our new spine for our books. There, so that's going to be my new spine. So now I'm just going to score it and um, attach some card stocks so that I could attach it to the inside covers of these. And then I attach my fabric on the outside. Um, and I've learned how to do this um, by taking Nick the Booksmith's Scholar's Ledgers course. Um, I do it very similar to hers. I do not paint the fabric. I use my own fabrics. Um, I use black fabrics. Um, I'm actually going to try a couple of books with some craft text as well. So that is what I will be using for some of my books. Uh, I'm just going to pull this paper out to see what's going on in there. Yeah, and it's just the chipboards come apart a little bit. So I'm just going to add some glue in there and pull that chipboard up so that I can straighten that piece out a bit. So I will put that in my press and press that chipboard back together. And then I'll be able to repair that by putting the paper back over like that. Okay. So that's all I'm going to do for today. Um, I'll show you the next process tomorrow. I'm going to work on the second book. Um, I've decided I'm going to leave this one intact. I really like the spine, how it has the picture um, already there as well. So I'm just going to take a piece of that. This is an old paper pad cover. I've got some scraps here and I'm just going to take a piece and cut it. So all I need is the height of the book and then the width, and I'm going to go with about one and an eighth. And I've gone ahead and cut a piece of chipboard. So it's slightly, slightly, slightly by about a sixteenth of an inch shorter than the actual book page. And you want to make sure you can close your book and it does not um, make it harder. Now, if you make it too big, you're going to get a very, very flat cover like this. See how flat that is? Because you've you've put a um, piece of paper is as big as the width of your spine. So it is literally going to give you that nice flat look. If you don't want it to be that flat, you can take this and trim it down. I'm going to try that. I'm going to trim it a little bit down. Um, and this isn't going to cut very well because my trimmer doesn't like one inch. fan of that thickness okay so now I've made it a little bit smaller and again it would go in there and now it's got a little bit more flexibility it's not as what I call completely in your face um, straight so it's got a little bit of le a give on either side and I'm just going to use my fabric tack because it's handy and it's here 
You can use PVA glue because that's for book and it's got the um, acid free it's for book binding. So PVA glue is good as well. But I'm just going to use the Fabri-Tac again because it's handy and it's here. And I'm going to put that in there. And I like the Fabri-Tac because you can move it around a little bit while you're figuring out where you want everything to go. And then you're going to have to give it a really good push down on either side there. Like that. Okay, so there's my spine reinforced. Now, I did keep those title pages from the books. So I have three or four of these title pages. And what I'm going to do is take one of these title pages and actually cut a piece to go on the inside here of the book. The spine, I mean, sorry. Um, just so that it will cover up some of that wonkiness that's there. And I don't know, I don't have the exact same picture, so it's not really going to work for coming out exactly the same. That one's got big, huge mountains. And then I've got that one as well with the lady's writing, handwriting on there. So I'm going to use this one. That's the one we're going to go with. And I'm just going to trim this down a bit. So let's trim it here. Like that. So we have this piece cut off. And then I'm just going to line it up, say... It doesn't have to be perfect. So let's say if we line it up there... And it's just going to cover a little bit of it's not going to cover all of it but at least when you have the book um, covered now you can put a little piece on top of there if you want or you can cut that um, chipboard off and just have that as the plane um, and then i'm just going to go ahead and trim it right about there so that when i put this in here and it's the same size page it will at least have a similar background um, in the back when you put your signatures in. So um, what I would do is I'm going to put it where I kind of where I want it. And then I'm going to take my finger and just kind of run it along the edge there. You can use your bone folder. But just so I know where my first piece is going to go. And again, we'll use our Fabri-Tac. myself holding my breath when I use the Fabri-Tac. I don't like the smell of it so I tend to um, a make sure the window is open but it's pouring with rain right now that's why it's so dark in here and I normally like I say have the window open and I try not to breathe it in too much because I don't like the smell of it. All right I'm just going to grab my bone folder here. Don't drop it. Okay. So I'm just going to line that up to the top and bottom edge of the paper. And then I'm just going to smooth that in on the inside there like that. And we'll do that to the other side as well. And smooth that down. And with Fabri-Tac, you sometimes have a couple of minutes to move things around if you can. Go. So I'm going to just push that in along the edges there. There. And that just covers up that piece of chipboard in the middle. If you want to leave it like this, you can. You can put um, some other paper on top of this so that you don't see that. Um, again, it's totally up to you. I normally recover the insides. I might put a pocket or something in here so that might cover up some of it as well. So that's my new spine. It's reinforced. It's a little bit thicker and it just helps so that you don't have that really flimsy spine. And it's cardboard so you can actually like 
curve it a little bit if you want to. Once it's dry, once the glue is dry and you've got everything together, you can put something in there that's round, like a little bottle of something, and just kind of round out that spine a little bit. But I'm not going to worry about that for now. So that's how I would reinforce the spine if I'm going to keep the book together. And that one will have probably three little signatures in there. I'll see if I can get three signatures in that one. And if I'm going to put a pocket um, on the inside of this and if I want to recover it. So if I want to put a book plate on the front of this. Um, if I want to add a book plate to the front, say, and put something else on there and I would put the brads right through the cover, then I would definitely cover this up with something because the brads would show through and I would have the brads pop through and then I would have some masking tape over the ends of the brads and then I would cover this with something. But if I'm gonna put a pocket there or some kind of a pocket, that might cover it as well. So that will be another decision for another day, but I think I am going to add a book plate to this one just to give it something. Um, a lot of people tend to put the book plates up here. I tend to put them down in the bottom. Don't know why, I just kind of like them down there. So I might go ahead and do that. So I would measure this all out. Make sure I'm still in frame here, yes I am. <clears throat> so I would measure this out, say, well, I would just use the width of my ruler. How about that? I'm gonna use the width of my ruler and that's where it would sit along the ruler like that. I'm going to flip it this way because there's cork on the back and it's sliding underneath the cork. There was sliding underneath the ruler there. So that's where I would kind of line it up. So there I know it's straight and I like that location and then I just make my little circles like that and then I'm just going to grab um, an awl and I have those here. So I got the sniffles again. Grab my punching pad. I use this a lot. It's a Sizzix. And <laughs> I just, it protects a lot of my surfaces. And it's just great because it will eventually go right through. And then I just put this little guy right here in the middle of that circle and push all the way down. And I've got a hole. There we go. So there's our hole for that. We need some brads. We've got some here. Let's see. I'll grab two of those. One and two. use a little bit of Fabri-Tac and I just run it along the edge of the book plate to kind of hold it in place so it doesn't move when I'm attaching it just on these two edges because it's flatter here like that and I get that in place where I want it and again you can put your ruler here make sure it's even like that and then I sometimes put a little tiny bit of dab of glue here on the top of the brad. In the hole where the brad's going. Like that. Now I got sticky fingers. And then I'm just gonna lift this up. And I wanna make sure that the feet are gonna be going out this way. So I try and make sure when I put it in that it's in the right direction. So you don't have to twist it around too much. So I'm just gonna push that guy in there. And this guy in there. Like that. Flip it around, lay it down flat. And then we just open up our feet. I just push my little thing in there like that to separate the feet. And I do have a brad setter somewhere, but I just use the end of this, push it right down into the center of the brad, and then push it out onto the feet. Like that. 
center of the bread, push up your feet. And then like I say, I always put masking tape over these. It just secures them a little bit more. And when I cover it with the um, paper or whatever on the inside, you won't see it anyway, but um, I just put a little piece of masking tape over that. And I push down on my feet. There we go. That just gives it a little bit more security. It's going to stay in place. Get off me. And push that down. There we go. So now if I put paper over that, it's not going to get caught on the end of those brads. So there's my little book plate. It's nice and even up against that ruler there. So there's my cover, my spine reinforced. I've got my book plate on and then I'm going to put a piece of cardboard in there and I might use that even some of that um, the cover book first page it's nice and thick so it'll look really nice in there because this is part of the same book so it could go in there and that would give it a nice color or if I want a more darker tea stain I can use some of my tea stain scraps that I have as well so there is my, and I do have um, some that I print out and has the word journal on it. I don't know if I have any handy. Oh, there's one here. Let's see. This one's cut too small, but I could print this out onto something and have this go inside as well. So something like that. I would have it on a piece of paper and have the word journal on there as well. And that might look nice. This is an old... Um, end paper that I use. So I put it in my printer and just cut it, cut the X, uh, the, so it's straighter on the side. Cut this part off here. And I try and keep it to a size of paper that you would normally use. So I would maybe cut it to a five by eight. So I'd cut this to five. And then when I change it on my printer and go to print it, I would make this a five by eight and I would print out the word journal on all of these. Big enough that they would fit inside this little plate. So I'd make sure that they were one and a quarter by two inches. I would make some little text boxes that were that size. And then I would make sure I could print the word journal inside there as well. So I can, I'm going to do that for this particular paper. So when I print it, I will trim this to five inches. So there's my five by eight piece of paper. I'll erase this, but it won't matter because I'm going to be printing on this side. I'm going to go to my computer and make some little two inch by, oh, I'm going to say one and one eighth inch text boxes. Put the word journal inside those text boxes and I'm going to print this on my printer. And I'll show you what it looks like. Okay, so I've gone ahead and opened up my Word document, changed my paper size to five by eight put in the words journal and I actually just did two columns and put the words in and this font is Algerian and I printed it. I did catch on one little corner there. See the toners there. I'm going to try and erase that while it's still wet with my eraser but um, and then I'm just going to go ahead and cut these. Just looking for my eraser here. I'm going to go ahead and cut these and I want to make sure that I have my two inch width. So I'm just going to cut this down the center. So I cut the paper in half to two and a half inches and then just cut, made sure I cut between each of the words and then trimmed it down to two inches to fit within my little book plate here. And then if I was going to leave that in there, I would possibly um, add a little bit of glue to the back of it just to hold it in place because it's so thin but that's how I use my end pages sometimes I will just put them through the printer um, or I will get out my black stamp pad and my label stamp and the thinner ones I will actually stamp and make those into labels as well so there's my label for the book and again I will probably trim it out a little bit and then glue it in. So I'm just going to take a snip off the top because I'm finding it sticking at the top a little too much. 
and I just barely trim some off the top and then that will go in there like that and because these are very thin I would definitely glue this guy in So then I would just pull that in. I want to make sure it's straight in the middle. There. Flatten it out. And the nice thing about the fabric tack, you can move it around a little bit before it dries. So there. There's my tab for the front, and there's my inside, and I've got my brads covered. Hi there, I just wanted to show you what the next stage was for creating my journals. Uh, this one I was just going to use as a creative journal. I call it my creative projects journal. Um, so I did keep the spine intact and I did reinforce the spine with a piece of the thin chipboard and some of the papers. Um, and I used the end paper that was there already when it came up this way I used that to cover the spine with some of that and I did add my book plate on the front and there's my little brad sticking out the bottom and it does have some masking tape now for this particular journal I knew I wasn't going to be putting a ton of papers and stuff in it um, what I wanted to do was write instructions for some of the journals that I make on a regular basis and have them in here um, with dimensions and stuff like that. I'm also going to make one for some of the fabric boxes that I make. Um, so right now, um, I just quickly made this one up and I did choose some waxed linen thread that I had in my stash and it's kind of a rusty brown. And all I've done is use a template. I did create a template using a piece of cardstock and it is the height of the book pages and then I just measured it out and it actually ended up being an inch the spine so I just measured out a quarter inch across and then I have a little um, hole punch and I just use that but you can measure out however many um, stitches you want now most people just do three large stitches I like having smaller stitches just the way I like to do things um, so that's what I used to punch the holes in the, the spine of the book and I just used my punching pad and my awl and I just laid the book flat on the inside and punched it and then all I do is take my template and fold it on a crease on one of the rows where all the little holes are and then I put my book pages inside pretend this is one of my signatures I would just set that inside put my punch or my template in and punch the holes so that's what I did for the inside. And then I went through my stash of scrapbooking paper. And again, I'm trying to use up as much of my scrapbooking paper as I can. Um, and these were two pieces that I had left over from something. So I just looked on my envelope punch board and I knew the inside of my book is five and a quarter by eight and a quarter. So I knew I wanted, um, they go by the card size, what size of card you would put in the envelope. And I knew I wanted a five by eight. So I needed a 10 and a quarter by 10 and a quarter inch piece of cardstock and I scored the first score at four inches. And I showed you how I did those in one of my other videos. So I went ahead and cut the scrapbooking paper and cut out the envelope and then I just cut off the point that is on one of the larger flaps so that my envelope flap sits straight instead of pointing like that. <clears throat> and then I always cut a little slot there to tuck the tip of the envelope in like that. So I've cut two of these and I think for the inside cover, I'm actually going to just glue these right on to that page there. Um, it, that way it'll cover my brads and it covers this little seam of where I had to join my spine up and it does cover up nicely the inside of the uh, cover and I still have enough space here where you can see the original paperwork so I'm going to add that and I've made two of these and cut the little slot there 
And I just have to decide which way I want the envelope to open. I think I want this way so that I can get at the stuff better rather than trying to get at it from that way. So I'm just going to use my Fabri-Tac and glue these in, uh, glue these closed. And the best way to do this, I don't know if this is a scrap piece or not, is to always put something inside your envelope um, so that when you're gluing your envelope closed, it doesn't leave a mark on the inside of your envelope and end up gluing your envelope closed. So I'm just going to, and sorry, I'm doing this fairly late at night. I'm just trying to get caught up on a few things. So I'm just going to do this portion. So I make sure my cardstock is in there and I'm just going to seal my envelope. Closed, and I'm going to close it up so that when I glue it in, it'll be nice and flat. I'm just going to get some of this gunge off the end of my glue ball here. Okay, so then we're going to glue this onto the book page. So this, these books um, that I'm creating these two journals from are books that I've had in my stash. And again, if anyone who's following me knows, I'm trying to purge some of my stuff in my, uh, my studio. Um, I'm trying to make more room to work on projects that I really, really want to finish. So I'm doing a little purge. And this is a some scrapbooking paper. This is a book that I had in my stash. The paper that I've used on the inside, this paper here that I'll show you in a second, um, was paper that I got at a thrift store when I was doing one of my runs in a thrift store. Uh, it was a mission thrift store. And it was a big stack of legal size paper and it was, I just like the color. It was kind of a orangey, tanny color. And I got it for 75 cents. So I've used quite a bit of this already. Um, but all I did was cut it down to 8.5 by 11 and then put it through my printer and printed these um, journal pages. And I will show you those as well. I'm just going to glue this envelope closed. Glue this guy closed. Put the card out. Close up my envelope. And that's going to go on that side, so let's add some glue to him. And I was going to do a whole bunch of flip outs and everything, but I don't really need them for this particular journal. Um, I might want to put some extra cards in here if I find the instructions are a little longer and I need more pages. Um, I will keep some spare pieces of paper in here, and then I can just take a spare piece of paper um, and put it on top of one of the other pages and just maybe attach it with some washi tape so that if I need to add more for specific instructions, I have the paper there. All right, so we're gonna glue that guy down. So on the insides of both of these, I now have a little envelope that I can stick some extra paper in. So again, this paper, I cut it to eight and a half by 11. This was 11, eight and a half by 14. I've cut it to eight and a half by 11. And then I designed this. This is from the Graphics Fairy, I believe, one of her freebies. Um, and then all I did was for the cover page, so this would be whatever project I'm working on, this, maybe this creative journal, I'll put the instructions in, um, who it was inspired by. So if I've seen it, um, on a YouTube video or Instagram or something like that or Facebook, I'm going to put the person that inspired me and then any links to their videos or pictures or their website so I can remember when I go back to make it again, I can give them credit to the idea. 
Um, so that's the title page. And then on the inside, I've got project titles. So whatever it is that journal I'm working on and tools and supplies I use for each project. So I try and keep a list so that if I go to make this project again, I can just pull out all the supplies I need and I don't have to right in the middle of it, go running around looking for an awl or my needle or, you know, creating a template. So I write down all my tools and supplies. And then if there's anything I know I need to buy for this project, like special papers or um, book plates or brads or anything like that, this is my little list of, I know I have to make sure I have in stock. And then these are the materials used in the project. So materials would be the type of paper, if I use the scrapbooking paper, um, this type of paper, the book, the cardstock envelope. So this is more the materials list. This would be more like the tools that you use, you know, my sharp knife, my ruler, my pencil, that kind of type of thing. And then this was where I would list all the materials that I've used. And then on the next page, it just says step-by-step -step instructions. So I will write down the instructions for creating the journal. So my step-by-steps. And then on the next page, I have just a little box here. And if I find I need to make a pattern, so say on one of my journals, I made the binding crisscross. So I had to draw out all the dots for the where I poked the holes and then I knew I had to come out this one and go in this one and across and so I had to make up a pattern. So something like that I would draw here. I would draw out the dots. I would draw out my pattern and put my ABCs which way I go um, or any dimensions that I know I really want to, or something if there's a certain fold and you can't really word it very well you can draw it out here. And then I did leave another page for making notes and this would be for if I make a journal and then I decide once I'm finished it, I might think instead of putting an envelope here, I would do maybe some flip outs so that maybe a file folder where it opens up and it's got a bunch of pockets or something. So there I would make notes for some variations that I like to try on another journal. And then on the back, I just created this ledger page. I went into my um, Word document and added a table and just made myself a, p a ledger page. And what I would do in here is write the month, so March 28th, how many of these I made. If I'm making like file folder journals or my little mini fabric journals, I would put down how many I made, what I was pricing them for, and if they're done and on my Etsy shop or something like that. So this is just kind of a way for me to keep track of the projects I'm making, the supplies that I need for them, the materials that you use, and this might be a good idea for pricing. The materials you use, if I'm using this paper, I would divide it however many sheets were in this paper and then I would kind of cost out what it would cost me per sheet of paper so, so that you know for your pricing at the end you'd have some pricing here. So that's basically what I created for myself. And then that's, like I say, the list of when I make them and if I price them, put them on my Etsy shop. And then it just starts all over again. So there is room in here and each signature for four projects. So there's four little title pages and I've got three signatures. So that gives me 12 projects to put in this little journal. And I thought it was kind of, um, I might make a couple of them and then just maybe do one, like I say, for my fabric boxes that I make. I like to make some of my own different sizes and stuff or my favorite ones. Um, and then just like the basic stuff for making some of my journals. Um, whether I use file folders and pricing them out and costing them and stuff like that. So there's my little creative projects journal. And then in here, I would just grab some different size paper about this size or maybe a little larger. And then if, if, if the step-by-steps, if I don't have enough room in here for the step-by-step -step part, I can always add another piece of paper and put a little piece of washi tape and then I can add some more instructions in there as well or just tape it there and then flip it up if the instructions are really really long <laughs> um, so that's what I'm going to add into the back here as well um, so that's my little creative journal that I've made um, I might still decorate the uh, front cover and add something here like a picture or something I just I really liked the cover I liked the pattern that was already on there and it was simple to make quick and easy um, but that's my first one and then the other one I'm working on is this bird journal I just squished it 
and I didn't manage to fix that little um, piece that was all caved in. Oh, it's up on here. You can barely see it. I actually got my knife and I pulled out all the pieces and put some glue in there and then put it in my paper press uh, in between some wax paper and just put it in there for overnight. And when I got it out, it was nice and flat again. And the, the chipboard had flattened out and everything. It was really nice. And then the little piece of paper that was there, I was just able to flip it over. So it actually came out nice and straight. Um, but then I ended up covering it with fabric, so that was even better. Um, so my plans for this one, and again, this spine I created using Nick the Booksmith's Scholar's Ledger's course. She shows you how to make a, a round spine for your books, and I always use that one. And then what I'm thinking for this particular one, maybe right here, is now this, the paper that they put on the f cover of this one, because it's from the 1950s, it's starting to peel a little bit so I'm thinking I'm going to use my some corners so I'm just going to put this inside so you can see it a little better <clears throat> can you see that am I in, there we are, in frame so I'm going to use some corners on the corners of the journal like that and then I'm going to use I just got a little piece of paper and this is from the end paper from one of the other books from this book actually and I think I'm going to put that in there like that. So that will be on the front as well. Because I don't want to take away from the feathers. I think the feathers are really cute. And then these are some of the, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm losing my voice, book pages that came with the actual book. So once I get these on, and again, I will put that on before I put the inside cover paper on. Um, I'm going to put these on the inside of the book. So I will actually be using one of the bird pages to go on the inside to cover that and then this my my signatures will be sewn to some fabric and that will go on first and it will extend past there and then I will put these end papers on and once I get to that part before I put the end papers on I will actually turn on my camera and just show you where I am with this one so that's the other one I'm going to be working on and I'll probably create a little pocket to go across the bottom of that and cover some of the words up uh, maybe a little angle pocket or something there so that that's just the background and then there'll be a little pocket on the front of that so that's the other one I'm working on and I'm just getting things together for that one um, but I just wanted to show you the process and the progress I'm making on them there go. of the journals that I'm creating for this exhibition that's coming up so that will be that, and it will be called, I'm not sure what I'm going to be calling that one yet. Um, but that's it, and I haven't um, started on the signatures yet. So that's as far as I've gotten. I'll turn the camera on again when I start working on this. And if I do decide to put something on the front cover of this one, I will be sure to make sure that, to show it in my next video. Thanks so much for watching. See you soon. Okay, so we're back, and I'm just going to do a quick update of where we're going with these two journals. Um, I finished this one. Let me show you this one really quickly. So I did add an eyelet right here in the top left corner because I wanted to hang my product tag from the journal. Um, I did end up putting something on the front. This is some um, sticker paper that I received in my monthly Your Creative Studio box. This is actually a, a, an original postcard. It actually has writing on the back and th that's why I put it in photo corner so that whoever uses it, you can actually see that it was an original postcard and it was April 9th, 1957, that somebody used this postcard. So I'm just going to put that back in the front oops, cover there. Um, I did add my normal type of closure, the ball fastener, and I did add an eyelet in the back and I've used some brown elastic cording. And then on the inside, what I've had to do is I've added a, a label to my uh, envelope here, and then I've put a hole inside the pocket so that you don't see that eyelet when it's closed, or sorry, that ball fastener when it's closed. And this one is right in the very, very corner of the envelope, so it will not affect whatever you put in the envelope. For each title page of the um, projects. I've added, um, these were the scraps left over from making the envelopes. I just made myself some whale tail tabs and put those on every title page. 
so that I can find each project and if I want to put a little name there I can and then I just added another little label inside this frame I just felt it was very plain and this just kind of gives it a little bit more vintagey look so there's my four projects per signature and then when I go to the next signature I start again with my four and then the last signature has the four and I just distressed around the tips of these tabs and I've distressed around the, oh, did I do that? I didn't do that one. I have to fix that. I just distressed around the edge of the outside of the flap of the envelope to make it stand out from the actual envelope itself. So I'm going to do that. <laughs> I missed this one because I was so anxious to get the labels and stuff on. So I've added the labels. And then this one, when I was punching the eyelet hole, I had to open up my envelope to do so. Um, I was a little too close to the edge. So all I've done is once I did that, I just got a sharp knife and cut from the fold of the envelope around that eyelet so that when I go to close it, let me just pull my little elastic tape. When I go to close it, it's still, it doesn't tear the envelope and I can still use the envelope. And then these, this is just the elastic with the little feet and it actually fits right between the tabs. I tried to make sure that the tabs would not be interfering when I put my closure on because you don't want to be squishing your tabs. So that's the finished creative journal for projects. Oh, and I did add some of the um, piece of the sticker paper were left over. I just added it to the back to keep them cohesive. So that one is now finished, I believe. And then for this feather one, I've been trying to figure out what to use for the inside. I wanted something to make it a little more, I think it's going to be another t creative or writing journal. Um, so I came across when I was going through my stash, these index um, papers, they are for in a binder, I guess. And these are legal size and they all have these little numbered tabs on. There were some that had longer tabs, but it, they're not very thick. It's more um, a thicker paper, a heavyweight paper. It's not cardstock, but it is paper. Um, so what I thought I would do is cut these down to the eight and a half by 11. And these would be the paper that I would use inside the journal because I like the coloring and it kind of goes with that theme. Um, so all I've done is gone over to my print uh, cutter and cut these at 11 inches. And I'm going to do that real quick to show you. So that will be my paper that I'm going to put through my printer and print something on it. And then I was left with this little piece, which is three inches by eight and a half. So all I do is cut the little tab off and there's a little tiny bit of shininess right there. I don't know if you can see that. So I cut this to eight and a quarter. I cut off a quarter inch to get rid of that little plastic piece. So I cut that off and there's the little piece. So that's the only piece that goes in the garbage from these um, index dividers. And then for these pieces, I went into my Word program and I actually created a piece of paper that was three inches by eight and a quarter. And I created some little a little template and there's two per page and these are already cut in half so these are the three inch those are the two pieces that I print out on it and I put it through my printer setting the paper at three by eight and a quarter and I've created these little tables and it's just a little list numbered one to 17 and I thought I would throw a couple inside this book and maybe some into my creative journal book um, great for little lists if you have things that you have to do and you can keep that on your desktop and just kind of check off as you do some of the steps that you have to do rather than leaving the book open and doing your step by step because that's just um, where I would keep the information um, record. This way, at least I could write a couple things down, you know, like make the spine cut the fabric, cut the pages, collect the signature papers, that kind of thing. So you could do your little step-by-steps -step and then just check them off. But it was a good way to use up those leftover pieces. So this is the only piece I have left. I've cut up all the index. And again, I just got these at a thrift store. They were in a bundle stuck inside of one of those little packages. Um, I think it cost me like $4, $2, something like that um, for quite a stack of them. And this is what I have out of all those index dividers. I had quite a... A stack of them and they've been sitting in my office supply cabinet for quite a long time so this is why I'm trying to purge I'm trying to go through my cupboards and use some of the products that I have so I also have this other little stack of those lists as well these ones they didn't print very well they printed a little too close to the top but I'm still going to use them 
Um, so that's what I've got out of those. So I'm going to actually end up putting these pieces through the printer. And I'm just going to make up my own lined paper. And these are this is one of the ideas that I'm coming up with. So I may have that on one side and then just plain lined on the other. So when the book actually starts, maybe what I'll do per signature is have that as the front on the front of the signature and I'll just do a whole bunch of different signatures and then this will be kind of on the top of each and then the rest will just be lined. So I just create my own lined paper and I'm just going to pop it through my printer. I might even do a full frame on one or two of them um, but that's going to be for this journal and I'll just cut them down to fit perfectly within the journal. So that's the color of paper I'm going to use for this one. So that's how I'm working on this one. I will add a last little video to show you this, how far I get with this once I get the signatures done and sewn together and in. What I'll work on is the inside pockets and then adding my book plate and then my little corners as well. So lots of stuff I'm still working on, but um, I will keep you up to date as I'm working on these journals. Bye for now. Now I just want to show you the finished product of the second journal and this is the book that I was using Audubon's Birds of America I don't even know how to pronounce that the Macmillan Company New York 1950 so I'm going to make a tag out of this and actually insert it in the book and this is the finished product it has a, one of the bird pictures on the front the book plate about a one in five eight spine, five signatures, the ball fastener, and the eyelet. And I did put on four metal corners because the corners were starting to look a little worn. So you just undo the elastic. I've used more of the book pages on the inside and create a little pocket here. So you can insert something there and I think that's where the tag will go. I've created a cover page with using one of the book pages and just add a little label there and just some lined pages that I've printed out myself. So there is, I think, eight pages. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So 16. So there's 32 pages per signature and there is five signatures. And each of the signatures has a cover page with one of the book per, book pages as the cover. And then in the back, there is another one of the book pages and another little pocket. And I've added a sticker here and label, sorry. And these are some tea cards that I've had. They're little bird tea cards. I'm going to leave those in the book as well. And I've used fabric for the spine to sew the signatures in. And that is it. The finished second journal. And these pages were made from the old index card or index pages that I was cutting up that I showed you at the beginning of the video. So I did manage to use them all for this particular journal and I will finish up by using making a tag with the with the title page. Thank you so much for watching. Hope everyone has a happy Easter and don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. I have lots more coming. I'm making three more creative journals using some of the old book covers from my stash. So I will be showing you how um, those are progressing as well. Bye for now.